Previously undisclosed contact between Russia and Trump associates. Recently, President uh, Trump, who's back at Mar-a-Lago tonight, called Russia a ruse, and when asked if such contact had taken place during the campaign, said, quote, I have nothing to do with Russia, and, quote, no person that I deal with does. That said, the stories keep coming about aides, former advisors, his attorney general, even his son-in-law, talking with Russia's ambassador even during or after the campaign, which in and of itself is neither uncommon nor improper. It's the denials, the non-disclosure, and all the rest that are raising questions and driving a whole new string of investigations. In a moment, former Trump uh, aide Carter Page, who first uh, denied and has now admitted to meeting with Moscow's man in Washington, will clarify exactly what that was about. First, the very latest on all of it from, from uh, CNN's Jim Acosta. When then-candidate Donald Trump delivered a foreign policy speech in Washington last April, Russian ambassador to the U.S. Sergei Kislyak was in the audience, listening in as the real estate tycoon called for better relations with the Kremlin. I believe an easing of tensions and improved relations with Russia from a position of strength only is possible, absolutely possible. Three months later, Trump National Security Advisors say they met with the Russian ambassador in Cleveland during the Republican convention. Former campaign advisor J.D. Gordon tells CNN he and another foreign policy advisor, Carter Page, discussed U.S.-Russian relations with the ambassador. The president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn also sat down with the ambassador at a previously undisclosed meeting at Trump Tower in December. Now even Republicans are saying it's time for White House officials to tell all. I think they, everybody who's had contact with the Russians need to get in a practice of oversharing. The president, who has pushed back on questions about his campaign's contacts with the Russians. Well, I had nothing to do with it. I, I have nothing to do with Russia. Is fighting back, tweeting this photo of Russian President Vladimir Putin and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer from 2003, calling the New York Democrat a total hypocrite. Schumer responded he's willing to talk about his contact with Putin under oath, asking the president, would you and your team... I have recused myself uh, in the matters uh, that deal with the Trump campaign. Democrats warn Attorney General Jeff Sessions' recusal from the Russia investigation may only be the beginning. The recusal is an admission that something was wrong. Jim, the, the president has responded today. What did he say? Uh, that's right. He's pointing out uh, that there are other people here in Washington who appear to be suffering from uh, some amnesia when it comes to meeting with the Russian ambassador. We can put this tweet up on screen. This uh, came from the president uh, earlier this afternoon. It shows uh, a picture of the House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi sitting down uh, around a lunch table, it appears, uh, with the Russian ambassador, uh, Sergei Kislyak. And this, this came after uh, Nancy Pelosi denied that she had ever met with him. Now, she did fire back with a tweet of her own. Uh, we can put that up on screen. Uh, she had a response saying that the president does not know the difference between an official meeting photographed by the press and closed uh, secret meeting that his attorney general lied about under oath. So uh, the uh, House Minority Leader trying to make the distinction there that, yes, this was a, a meeting that was photographed by the press. Uh, whereas uh, Jeff Sessions simply uh, forgot or did not tell the truth about his meeting uh, with the Russian ambassador to Anderson. I should point out that uh, one of the uh, outgoing questions about all of this is what about Hillary Clinton's campaign? I did reach out to a, a former top official with the Clinton campaign uh, who said nobody from the campaign, no high-level officials from that campaign ever met with the Russian ambassador uh, trying to uh, push back uh, from a Democratic standpoint against this uh, pushback, you, you might say, from the White House that, oh, just about everybody here in Washington met with the Russian ambassador. The Clinton campaign, uh, at least this one official is saying, no, that did not happen uh, when it comes to top officials with that campaign, Anderson. All right, Jim Acosta, thanks. Uh, more now on one of the two campaign advisors, other than the attorney general, who met with the Russian ambassador during the convention. His name is Carter Page. It's a name that might be familiar because it keeps coming up again and again in reports regarding Russia and the Trump campaign and in order the Trump White House. Carter Page is here. I'm going to talk to him in just a moment. But first, some background from our Jim Shuda. We heard you might be announcing your foreign policy advisory team soon, if there's anything we are to be that. doing. Carter Page, PhD. March 2016, Carter Page's name is announced publicly by then-candidate Donald Trump. Page was known more as a businessman than a foreign policy expert. He is an energy executive and former investment banker with ties to Russia. He lived in Moscow for three years while working for Merrill Lynch. During that time, he worked as an advisor to Gazprom, the Russian-controlled energy giant, which is now run by a former aide of Vladimir Putin when he was the mayor of St. Petersburg in the 1990s. 
In 2008, Page came back to New York and founded his own company, Global Energy Capital, LLC. Page also started writing columns for Global Policy, an academic journal where he was critical of sanctions and of the Obama administration's relationship with Russia. Three months after Page is named as one of Trump's advisors, he attended a meeting of foreign policy experts in Washington. And according to the Washington Post, he stunned the crowd by praising Russian President Vladimir Putin, also saying a Trump presidency would be good for U.S.-Russia relations. Thank you very much. Um, a month later, Page was in Moscow for a speech at the New Economic School. He told the crowd that he didn't want to comment on the U.S. election, but was sharply critical of U.S foreign policy. A failure of U.S. analysts and leaders to consider these principles has often allowed Washington to disregard proposed ideas that are actually not contrary to America's interests. After it was during this trip to Moscow that Page allegedly met with Russian nationals who were under U.S. sanctions, an allegation that Page has denied multiple times. Did you have any meetings, I'll ask again, did you have any meetings last year with Russian officials in Russia, outside Russia, anywhere? I had no meetings, no meetings. I, m I might have said hello to a few people, you know, as they're walking by me at my uh, graduation, uh, the graduation speech I gave in July, but no meetings. You know, I think it's really just a political stunt from the get-go. Months after Donald Trump named Page to his foreign policy advisory team, a Trump campaign spokesperson gave him a new moniker, informal advisor. Then, one month later, communications director Jason Miller changed Page's status again, writing in an email to The Hill, quote, he's never been part of our campaign, period. After the election, the Trump White House continues to deny any close connection between Carter Page and their campaign. Carter Page is an individual who the president-elect does not know and was put on notice months ago by the campaign. Carter Page later said that while he was part of the foreign policy team, he did not work directly with Mr. Trump and did not work on anything substantial relating to Russia policy. Jim Shudo, CNN, Washington. So that's some of the background. Carter Page joins us now.